Open up your Bibles, please, to the book of Leviticus, the book of Leviticus. It's important to talk about body, soul, and spirit, body, soul, and spirit. We're going to look at the book of Leviticus. Because the thing is, when you mention about the soul to a Jehovah Witness, they automatically assume that the soul is referring to the body. They think that it's the same thing. So if the body dies, then what they call is soul sleep, they call it. We're going to look at the book of Leviticus chapter 5, and we will read verse 2. Leviticus chapter 5, and we will read verse 2. That's why there's an important doctrine which we believe in, and it's called dispensationalism. Dispensationalism. In dispensationalism, we believe in rightly dividing things so that the picture can make more sense. So we believe in dividing things, and the things that we divide are body, soul, and spirit. It is absolutely important that we divide these three things. However, there are verses in the Bible that seem to show that there's a combination, combination of body and soul. And then there are other verses that seem to combine soul and spirit. So how do we deal with these passages, especially if Jehovah Witnesses really use these kind of verses? So here are some examples. We're going to look at Leviticus chapter 5, and we will read verse 2. The Bible says, or if a soul touch any unclean thing. So is this soul literally a soul, or is it referring to a body? A soul touch any unclean thing, whether it be a carcass of an unclean beast, or a carcass of an unclean cattle, or the carcass of unclean creeping things, and if it be hidden from him, he also shall be unclean and guilty. So notice right here that this doesn't seem like a soul that touches. It's actually a body that touches an unclean carcass. That's like a combination with this soul and body together. Let's also look at Leviticus 5.4. Or if a soul swear, pronouncing with his lips to do evil. See that? That sounds like uh, the body. There's a mingling with the soul and body together. Whatsoever it be that a man should pronounce with an oath, and it be hid from him. Let's also look at another passage. Look at Leviticus 7:18, Chapter 7 and verse 18. This is combination all over, this strange combination. A soul can eat, it literally eats, a physical meal. And if any of the flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offerings be eaten, at all on the third day it shall not be accepted, neither shall it be imputed unto him that offereth it. It shall be an abomination. And the soul that eateth of it shall bear his iniquity. Can a soul eat a physical meal? Let's look at Leviticus. Well, here's a bet. Here's a really good one. Look at Isaiah 51. Isaiah 51, verse 23. Now, independent, fundamental Baptist churches, because they lack so much knowledge of the Bible, they think it's ridiculous that the body can be mixed up with the soul. Actually, no. You saw so many verses where the body and soul, they were like mixed together. It's like the soul is stuck to the body. Is that heresy? No, this is actually true. We saw these verses at Leviticus. It's all over Leviticus. Whatever the body does something, the soul does the same thing because it's stuck together. Because here's a really good one. Look at Isaiah 51 and verse 23, verse 23. But I will put it into the hand of them that afflict thee, which have said to thy soul, bow down, that we may go over, right? You're telling the soul to bow. But what is bowing, the soul or the body? And thou hast laid thy body as the ground and as the street to them that went over. So there's no doubt there's this combination of body and soul together. So this is a doctrine that independent fundamental Baptist churches deny, including King James only people. No, Bible believers believe that the body and soul is stuck together. But wait a minute, are we like the Jehovah Witnesses then? Where we think that whenever the Bible talks about the destruction of the body, that it's in the grave, that the soul is in the grave too? No, the soul... Body, soul, and spirit are divided. Wait a minute, but I thought you said they're stuck together. Ah, this is where it gets really interesting. This is a doctrine that we really believe in. Look at the book of Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. 
Here's a favorite passage on eternal security, as well as an important doctrine that a lot of churches don't know about or teach. Some would dare call it heresy. It's called, this is one of the important doctrines of dispensationalism, it's called spiritual circumcision. Why? Because God did a spiritual operation. What is that? This spiritual operation is where you as the body, so where you as the body, you have a soul in you, right? This soul is actually stuck to your body because we've seen so many verses on that in Leviticus and Isaiah. But what God did is that in this spiritual circumcision, he caused the soul which was stuck to the body a division. So he puts a dividing line here around the soul. So even though your soul is in the body, it's not of the body. So it's like an ice tray. If you have an ice tray and then you fill it up with water and then you put it in a freezer, what happens? The ice becomes part of the tray. But then if you break it apart, the ice cubes may be still in the tray, but it's now no longer of the tray. That's the same thing with what God did with you. You might say, no, I don't believe it. No, look at this, Colossians chapter 2. Look at verse 11. In whom also ye are circumcised. Now, what is circumcision? It's referring to a bodily cutting off. It's referring to cutting off, cutting off from some part of the body. So God separate, he cut you off from the body. Because keep reading. With the circumcision made without hands. So this is a circumcision not by physical hands. It's an invisible spiritual circumcision. What did he cut you off from? That's the question, right? What kind of thing did he circumcise you out of? In putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Look what God separated you out of. He separated you from what? Your whole body. So you yourself is separated from the body. So your whole body is separated. Now think about this. Who is you then? I thought the whole body, this whole thing is me though. But God says I'm separated from this whole thing. Well, what does that mean then? Who is you? Who is me? The soul. Because think about it. Who is the real you after you die? Is it the body that goes in the grave? Or the one that goes to heaven or to hell? The soul that goes to heaven or hell. You see that? So that's why it makes sense. That's why uh, the you is referring to the soul, the real person, the real you. The body is this outward shell that you're separated from. So that's why we believe in a doctrine called spiritual circumcision. That's why it makes sense when you read the Old Testament. So this is a very interesting doctrine and an important doctrine of dispensationalism. What we believe is in the Old Testament, what? The body and the soul were stuck together. Why? Because they didn't have what? That circumcision of Christ, right? Which is, so Jesus Christ did not die on the cross yet. Until Jesus Christ died on the cross, then what happened? That body and soul became separated. See that? Because why? Because now with his action on the cross, it enacts that ability to separate the soul from the body. That's why it makes sense that no matter what sins your body commits, it doesn't contaminate the soul. This is a strong verse for eternal security. No matter how many sins you commit in your life, if Jesus Christ circumcised you out of your body, no matter what you do in your body, it will bounce off of your soul. You know why? Because God put a dividing line. But it also makes sense, go to Ezekiel 18 now, go to Ezekiel 18. But that's why it makes sense in the Old Testament, your salvation was not just by faith, it was faith and works. Old Testament salvation is definitely different from New Testament salvation. Old Testament salvation, it's not just faith, it was 
in included works, but in the church age, we all know this, it's faith alone, not works. Why? Because of this circumcision. So no matter what you do, it's not going to contaminate your soul. But in here, because the body and soul were combined together, it makes sense that the Old Testament saints had to follow the law, had to do animal sacrifices, do so many works, because whatever they did in their body was dependent upon the salvation of their soul. Because look at Ezekiel chapter 18. This is a very, very ugly passage. Look at Ezekiel chapter 18. There is no way to explain this verse away. Ezekiel 18, and notice what the Word of God says, the salvation of an Old Testament saint during this time. Look at verse 4. Behold, all souls are mine as the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, what? It shall die. When you sin, then you die in your sin. Let's also look at verse 20. Verse 20. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Look at verse 21. But if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he hath committed, and keep all my statutes, and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. See that? He shall not die. Look at verse 23. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, saith the Lord God, and not that he should return from his ways and live? Look at verse 24. This is scary. You talk about losing your salvation. But when the righteous turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity and doeth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, shall he live? All his righteousness that he hath done shall not be mentioned in his trespass that he hath trespassed and in his sins that he hath sinned. In them shall he what? Die. Do you think dying in your sins is referring to a normal physical death? No, this is a spiritual death. Not only that, it actually says soul. You know what's so funny is that these independent fundamental Baptists, they don't believe the body and soul is combined. And they don't believe in a faith and work salvation in Old Testament. But what do you do with Ezekiel 18 then? So then all of a sudden now they say that this soul here is actually talking about the body here. Wait, I thought you didn't believe the body and soul were stuck together. So now you replace the soul with the body in Ezekiel 18? Not only that, you don't even believe in the faith and work salvation in the Old Testament. Independent fundamental Baptist churches, see, they lack so much doctrine. Now, the easy answer is this. Some of these people, now, they came up with this extreme weird teaching. Only a small fringe would do this, but this small fringe, they would say, well, yes, we believe that the soul was stuck to the body. So, yeah, so when Ezekiel 18 says that whenever the body sins, the soul sins. So that's what it means. But that doesn't mean that the soul was the soul salvation was dependent upon faith and works. It's only talking about a physical death here, Ezekiel 18. It's not a spiritual death. It's only talking about a physical death because the soul was stuck to the body. So whenever the body did a physical thing, it's talking about a physical death. But the thing is, is that that kind of argument from IFB, weird fringe people, that falls apart because they just admitted that the soul is stuck to the body. So if they admitted that when the body sins, then does that mean the soul sins too? Yes, the soul sins along with the body. That affects the soul salvation then, does it not still? See, so that argument is really foolish and it falls apart. Now the thing is, is that in this argument, there's going to be some people that will try to push this doctrine of spiritual circumcision away, but it's all over. In fact, the Jehovah Witnesses, they will make a heyday out of this, and they will rejoice and do jumping jacks, saying that, oh, so you see, the body and the soul, they're combined together. There is no difference. But uh, no, there is a difference, because we're going to look at these passages. Matthew chapter 10, please, Matthew chapter 10, and we will look at verse 28. So we believe that they are stuck together, but that doesn't mean that they're the one and the same thing. We believe that the soul was simply stuck to the body, a separate thing that stuck to the body, and that it was divided at salvation. They're not one and the same thing. Two separate things, but the soul was stuck to the body. And then at salvation, it was separated. 
if j w s keep insisting that no they're the same one in the same thing then you show the matthew ten verse twenty eight now the bible shows that there is a difference and not only that this is a strong verse that debunks jehovah witness teaching that the soul when it dies it dies like the body no there is a penalty a burning hell forever matthew ten twenty eight and fear not them which kill the body but are not able to kill the what soul but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in where? Hell. See, there is a big difference. There is a difference. There is, uh, they are not one and the same thing. Not only that, look at Romans 7. This makes sense when you look at Romans chapter 7. Remember, the you is referring to the soul or the spiritual nature, right? And then the body is referring to the old, the fleshy nature. That's why it makes sense when you read throughout the entire Pauline epistles, there's this duality here. Like this one person, uh, this one part wants to do what's right, but the other part wants to do what's wrong. Spiritual circumcision is an important doctrine. It's a true fact because your everyday life is evidence of spiritual circumcision. The spiritual nature conflicts with the fleshy nature. See that? Now look at Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. Verse 15. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. See that? So Paul's saying one side, I want to do what's right, but the other side, I'm doing what's wrong. Why? Because it's not you, the real you, spiritual nature, but it's your flesh. Look at verse 17. Now then, it is no more I that do it. See, not the real you, the spiritual nature. But what? Sin that dwelleth in me, for I know that in me that is in my what? Flesh. See? Dwelleth no good thing, for to will is present with me. See, spiritual nature, but how to perform that which is good I find not, because of that fleshy nature, he said. So that is evidence. Romans 7 is the greatest evidence of spiritual circumcision. So that's why dispensationalism is important. Why? It teaches different salvation plans. So you don't have to get stumble at Old Testament verses that talks about works for salvation. It also is a verse for eternal security, once saved, always saved. It's also a verse that explains this combination, but a separation as well. You know why the soul and the spirit combine together? So I mentioned that part. You know why? Because the soul became part of what? The spiritual nature. That's why. That's why when the Holy Spirit is birthed inside you, you became a part of that, the soul. The soul is the real you. But before then, you, if it was uh, before the New Testament, and not only New Testament, even now, if you're not saved in Jesus Christ, what's going on? A lot of people's soul is going to burn in hell because of all the sins they've committed in their body. And they need Jesus Christ to put that dividing line so that they can be found holy and pure in Jesus Christ. 